Thank you, uh, the Java User Group uh, Toronto, for, for inviting me. I'm pretty happy to be here tonight and talk about one of my passion is how to initiate kids to Java programming. Uh, all this started about five years ago when I went to Java 1 for the first time. Uh, going after it, I said, I want to come back one day as a speaker. It took me five years to muster the courage to, to present a talk to Java 1. This year, I was lucky enough to, to well, I took my courage. I, I, I uh, sent the submission for this talk. I got accepted, and from there, but that's how I, I got here tonight. And uh, I've done it as well at the Java User Group in, uh, in Montreal. So I said uh, I talked a bit about myself earlier. I'm Felix Robert. I'm from Montreal, uh, Canada. I, I work from uh, I work for Intac Insurance in Montreal. We're also based here in uh, in Toronto. We're at the 700 University. Uh, it's the biggest uh, insurance industry in property and, and uh, casualty insurance. I'm viewed as a technology enthusiast. Everything that has to do with technology, I, I read, I tried it, and I love to the outdoors, skiing, mountain biking, hiking, those are pretty much my, and my family. So with this talk, I was able to match two of my passion together, which, is my, which are my kids and technology. It became one of the pastimes that uh, uh, we're doing together. And before, well, it was skiing or mountain biking. Those are two of the things that uh, we like to do. I also lead a, a DevOps team called the Virtual Disturbance Squad inside of Intact. Uh, it's a small team that I've put together and we're there to kind of try to change the way uh, our industry is looking at, um, at technology. We're pretty conservative usually. A lot of wet sphere and uh, don't break anything. But we're, we're looking at bringing deploy, uh, hot deployment, uh, dockers. Uh, we even looked at, we spoke with the Cloud Foundry people. We're, we're trying to change uh, everything, automation, uh, continuous integration, continuous delivery, try to go by our change management, which is really, really, uh, uh, really, really heavy. And I'm involved in a lot of uh, different user group. Java. Now I'll be involved in the Toronto user group when I, I I try to come here at least once a month. So I'll try to to match it with the last Thursday of every month. Now that I know that uh, you guys have a pretty cool venue here with the beer and everything, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> now if the talk gets boring, at least you guys have a beer to fall on. So it's a, it's good. And I'm involved in the Docker uh, user group, Docker community a lot and uh, the Dynatrace uh, user group as well. So the purpose of this talk was to, to be able first, it, it all came up because uh, last year my, my son was starting uh, uh, preschool and uh, my wife came back after the, the parent-teacher uh, meeting and she said, you'll have to go and uh, talk in, uh, in your son's class. It's, you're lucky, He's a, it's in April, so you, you have a couple, I had like six months to prepare for it. But she said, I've done it for, 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 for your daughter, so now you'll do it. It's your turn. So when I turned to my, my son and asked him what, what you want me to talk about, he said, well, talk about your work. So I asked him, what is my work? And he, he didn't really know. He said, I know that you're working with computer, but that's pretty much what he knew. And so when I asked him what, I, what he wanted me to talk about, he said, well, let's talk about games. Well, I work in insurance. I don't work in games. So it, doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't. And the, I'm pretty sure that talking about games, uh, talking about insurance uh, to a bunch of six years old after uh, two minutes, uh, and I'm generous, I think, with the two minutes, I would have lost my crowd. So my wife came with that good, great idea create a game, an interactive game, where, where they'll be telling you how to create the game and you'll show them how to do it. There's only, they're only six years old, no? you, you got <laughs> you got to think about that. But that got all the process thinking, and okay, now I have to go talk to a bunch of six years old about computer, what I do in life. So 
how am I going to do this? I started to do a lot of research. So that's a bit how that, that, that talk uh, was structured. I'll show you a bit the different option that I found on how to, to teach your kids. Uh, the, the option, the tool that I decided to use to, to, to go with them and initiate them with it. And uh, if all goes well, I'll, I'll be able to maybe defy a bit the, the demo gods and, and go with uh, uh, a bit of the live coding. I'll show you what game we have to create it uh, with them. Uh, all the game was created, about 85% of the game was created by them, coded mostly by my daughter with the help of, uh, with the PO, which was my son. And, uh, uh, and we'll, we'll go up from there. So those are the two, the two people that, that helped me, my son, which sometimes I call him Olivier. So if you refer to Olivier, you'll know that it's the, he's the PO on, on the project. He tries, he wants, to, he wants to help, but most of the time it's, I wanted to do this, let's make it happen. <laughs> That's, how, that's a bit how he, he deals with his sister, which is... Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, he, like, he, he's prepared. He, he's pre I, as you said that, that, this year at their, their, their school's picture, they, they, they got him the way he's dressed, and they got him them sitting on their desk to take the picture, and he actually looks a bit like a, a CTO or... A, you know those uh, startup guy in the how a guy in the valley would look and how he would go telling you what to do and not do much. But he, I think he has that line pretty well secured there. <laughs> no harm feeling. Eh? I only had half a beer yet. We'll get to know each other better afterwards. <laughs> So, like I said a bit earlier, we'll go through all the different options. I, I, I don't have the, um, there's a lot of options. If you ask Google, how can I do this, it'll give you uh, a lot of it. Uh, I've talked this uh, at lunchtime at the Pivotal, and I've learned about the new one that I forgot. So, I hope that Elib still re remembers Blocks or Blockly from a Google. See? I still remember it. By two, with two brains, that we can remember it. Uh, we'll go through a bit Greenfoot, which is the uh, uh, the tool that I decided to, uh, to use. So, in our product selection, that, that's a bunch of product that I had. I had pretty basic criteria. I went pretty much the same way you're doing a product selection. If you were a CTO and you want your guy to work on it, <laughs> so. The first thing I wanted, that I wanted something that was uh, Java based because uh, being a Java developer, I wanted to learn. I didn't want to learn. I was a bit lazy on this one. I didn't want to learn a new language to try to teach my kids. I, I, I went with, with one I knew. The other thing that I wanted is something that, if possible, could be run in French or at least have some French support. Uh, because I'm uh, being a French, uh, French of mother tongue, it's a lot easier to deal with that. I didn't want to teach them English as well as Java programming. And the the third thing is, it's really important that you have really fast feedback, because their their attention span is really really small. Uh, the first time I tried, I sat them in front of the computer. After five minutes, they were gone. Uh, we're in October. I said, "Okay, it's all right. I still have six months." You know, I tried another. <laughs> I tried like a week after. It lasted like seven minutes. They were gone. So uh, at that rate, I think uh, I think I need two years before I actually am able to get them to sit in front of the computer and do something. So that that was one of the main focus of the software. You need instant feedback. Software was easy. You ask Google, it gives you a bunch of ideas. There's a lot, lots of blogs, there's a lot of people that did that research. And after that, you say, give me some methodology. Is there any tricks? Is there anything that you guys did that worked well that I could use? And that's where I didn't find much. And that's a bit... What kind of age group are you targeting? My, my, 
I, I target my, I wanted to be able to do it for my kid's son, which was six, but it, it's a bit too young. There, there's too, well, un, until they can actually read, it's a bit too difficult to, to try to do what we did. But with my daughter that was uh, in grade uh, four, which she can read, she can, that uh, at nine, 10, she, she, does this, she does this on her own now with less and less interaction from me. She'll come sometimes, she'll ask some ideas, I'll push, I'll, she doesn't really know how to do something, I'll ask, I'll, it's always a question of asking questions. You're, I'm not giving them answer, I'm giving them questions, so they'll come and eventually when they'll hit the point where, uh, okay, they know how to do it in, 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 in English, I'll, I'll tell them the, the, the syntax in Java. That's, that's a bit how, uh, how I, I, I approach all this. But the, if I, and feel free to interrupt me when you want. I find it a lot better to, no, but it's all right. It's, that's why we do it as a meetup type of thing. It's a lot easier to answer the question when it, uh, when it arrives. It makes the, the presentation a lot more live than try to do it at the end when, uh, when we're, we're all done. So. Um, when I, when I looked at the, my son that, and my daughter that after five minutes, they were, they were gone playing in the, in the living room and in the playground, in the playroom, I said, well, how, how am I, how am I going to tackle this? Because if I look at them, if I, if I take a box of Lego, brand new Lego, and I put it on the table, they can do it for hours and hours. If I put them in front of the computer, which for us is a bit like doing Lego, but I, for me it's like doing a Lego, I, I can do it for hours. I don't see time go by when, when I do something that I like. And that's, that's a bit where it, it, it strikes me. What Lego does well in their little booklet, the booklet that it allows you to follow where you want to go, it's that instant interaction, that instant feedback, the instant where when he created something, he can look at the pieces that he needed, the, the pieces that he put together, the result, it's all there on that, on that piece of paper. And he can take this and run on the other side of the room and show it, say, here, that's what I did. And he goes back and he looks at the, uh, they look at the other page, take the pieces that they want, and they, they put it together and they see the result. So that, that, that's the, that's the mechanism that I wanted to try to replicate with, uh, with the, tool, the, the tool that I, had that I will select. The other portion that I came out of this is that by using their, their, their game and watching them playing, I kind of figured out that, well, we're talking about inheritance and stuff like that. I have problem after 16 years remembering the exact definitions. If you ask, I know it because I've learned it. Now I've used it as if it was a second nature, but explaining it in, in their terms, I'll, I'll go and look sometimes at Google. So they gave me the exact definition and it still confused me a bit when I look at it on, on Wikipedia. So how I can't, <laughs> I can't really explain that to a, to a 10 years old. They won't understand that. But if you take um, if you take a uh, if you take uh, their a carpet on the ground where they where with they have a my son has a carpet where there's streets and uh, where he plays with his little car and you you kind of figure you make them realize that that's the the world that they're playing with and that everything every every uh, cars that he bring in or uh, uh, playmobiles that he bring in it's a new object. And if you take your family of all your policemen, they're pretty much the same thing. There's a policeman, but one of them is a CTO or the chief, and one of them is the is the go-to guy. You know, they 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 all have they all have the same basics, but some are doing things differently. So, and it's all with their actual their their game, their day-to-day -day, uh, toys with what. You, with which they are playing, that some of the concept grew, and I was able to refactor, get them to refactor some of the code, and understand 
uh, the basics principle of object-oriented program. It, so the tools that I, we looked at are pretty much list uh, on the slides. Uh, the first one on the top left, it's one of the, one of the mostly known. We have Scratch. It's a, it's a well-known tool for, for kids. They brought this one now to a, 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 a lower level, to younger kids even. It's called Scratch Junior. It's being used on iOS or, or uh, Apple uh, or um, Android device. I'm not an Android guy. I am an Android device. And it's, if you go at the, the Scratch Junior level for the kids, they're creating a game as if they're creating a, a, a jigsaw puzzle. So it's just bringing pieces of puzzle together and that, that's create, it, you create a, a string of, uh, of elements, you press play and your, your cat is moving on the, on the, in the screen that, that you have selected. I use it on the car, it's, it's, it's pretty simple right now, but I challenge them with it in the car right now. What I will do it, it let's say I, my parents live about two hours away from where, from where I live, so they'll take the, the, the tablet and say, hey, Dad, give, him, give us some challenge. So what they'll do is often it's a, I'll tell them, okay, take that cat and make sure that he, he goes from left to right 14 times. The first time they'll do it, they'll do that, cross, that phrase 14 times one after the other. But, and then you ask them, okay, you, you can do it, but remove uh, 50 pieces of your puzzle. So do the same puzzle, but with f uh, half, half the, the pieces. So they'll argue and eventually they'll do it. It's, it's, uh, and they're learning stuff, they're learning problem solving by using a tool that they, they like to use. Instead of playing Minecraft on the way down, they're actually learning how to program. If I leave my computer lying around, they're, they'll be often trying to add something to the game instead of playing uh, Minions or uh, Spider-Man on the, because it's the game that, it's a pretty basic game. Uh, I'll show you, you'll see, it's a pretty basic game, but it's, it's something that they had created and they're, they're proud of it. Scratch, it, it aims at kids about eight years old, eight or nine years old, and it's all pieces of code that are already created. And it's all color coded. So if you if you want something that's uh, create an action that'll get a piece moving, it's probably yellow. Uh, a loop will be uh, will be blue. Uh, something else will be purple. And and if you want to, uh, if you if there's pieces, uh, if this pieces snippet of code that can go into another pieces of code, they'll have uh, uh, round edges. That means oh, there's a round there. I can put anything that has round edges in there. So they're not really learning how to code, but they're learning some uh, basics, uh, basic principle on how to attach snippet of code that they don't understand together. Uh, there's a big community on it. It, uh, it, it, looks like, it looks like creating some flash when you, the old flash, if you guys have been there a lot, it's, it's like bad memories in my head, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's there, it's drag and drop. The community is good. There's a lot of uh, snippet of code on YouTube or people that try to explain it on YouTube if you want. So that was uh, 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 the first thing I looked at. Then you get the evolution of Scratch, which is Alice. And I spoke to the creator of Alice and he, he said, we did a big boo-boo. We should have never called it Alice. It was created by a University of Virginia and the goal was to try to bring a uh, uh, little girl to software engineering. So they'll say, a bit like Lego did with their friend collection, but Lego was successful with friend, which Alexia or the University of Virginia was not successful with, with, uh, uh, with Alice. They, it's, they say, we'll call it Alice. It's nice, it's gonna be appealing to the girls. So they, they'll come and they'll be software engineer. But what they didn't think about is that all the boys don't want to use Alice. It, it, it's when you take your 14 years old, say, "Hey, let's go. We'll we'll talk about Alice." And she's actually there in the program. And by default, it's a bit the ID. It's more girly. It's they they designed it so they 
they, it's kind of a princess type of thing. They, they, they kind of missed the, 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 the target, but it's really the evolution of Scratch. It's the same type of sprite that has been created. You can drag and drop pieces of code, but they gave you the ability of changing that code. Uh, it, instead of being 2D or flat, it's, you're, you're becoming to be a, a 3D uh, 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 development that like you can do games in 3D. Now, uh, Oracle kind of said, well, there's good stuff in there. Let's try. Oracle pushes a lot to, for kids and uh, programming for, uh, towards kids in school in the United States mostly. So they're, they're getting their hand inside the Alice for now. Let's see. Well, I'm not too sure that Oracle does a lot of good thing, but they might screw it up. They might change the name and maybe they'll, <laughs> they'll be able to, to get it evaluated properly. Uh, uh, also ask that little fox there. I'm not sure. It's a Ruby app. So it's for older kids. It's 13 and, uh, and above. It's really for older kids. Most, I would say mostly because Ruby is for older people or different type of people, I would say. Hope there's no Ruby developers down here. Okay, I'm good. <laughs> and if there are, there used to be great fun. Yeah, there, well. If there are, has anybody written them? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 actually, yeah. I, I never got anybody to raise their head, but I, afterwards, we'll drink beer and somebody will shamelessly says that, oh, I've done, I haven't done Ruby in my basement, but. It's okay, Santa's gonna have to make Ruby books for us all. If you're bad, you get a Ruby book collection for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, well, it, they kind of missed a bit their market on this one, because for me, I've tried it. I'm, but that I tried it because it's not, but I didn't want to really learn Ruby. But I, I talked around, I asked a lot of questions. It's actually used in some enterprise for newbie and how to teach <laughs> their new developer some concept. They'll use it there. I have a friend, but I'm a bit ashamed now that I, I, I laugh. I have somebody that I know really well. <laughs> he <laughs> earns a living by doing Ruby. And uh, he actually sometimes use it to to test some snippet of code because it's it's a lot fa it's a lot faster and it's there, it, and it, it only works on on Mac. So if you want to buy three a three thousand dollar computer to your kid, uh, that's that's pretty good. And, uh, a word of caution: if you get them going on a Mac, that's all they want. It's so on at ten years old now. My daughter, we visited school. Uh, last month for, for for grade seven, and they needed a computer, and the this kid said, "Ah, you can take any computer at six hundred bucks. Is all right, but she wants her Mac. But that's that's what she <laughs> she's used to. So you gotta uh, you gotta manage expectation after that. <laughs> one good uh, one good tool that I, that I like, but kind of missed the target. With I didn't want to learn a new language." Is a Code Monster, but it's mostly the story about Code Monster that I like. That's a it's a Greg Linden. That guy is from Sweden. He had the same kind of the same not problem, but the same goal that I had. He's a JavaScript developer. He wanted to to spend time with his son, teach them how to program JavaScript, and he had the language barrier because they're only speaking Swedish. So. He created that. It's it's a it's a browser base uh, tool. He created that for for uh, for uh, his family to use. Uh, since I've been doing this talk, I've done it a couple of times in the office as well. I have a team. I, I, I manage a UI team, so there's a lot of the, the Java develop, uh, JavaScript developer on it. And one of the guy took it to his son, and they they really enjoyed it. And sometimes I get into the office and they use that web-based controller to, to test some of their snippet of Java code, JavaScript code, because it's all there. They'll, they'll test the snippet and then put it in their, in their work. So it's a, it's a pretty nice tool. Then the one that I really wanted, I, I was hoping that it would be the right solution. It's the Mindstorm. 
But at the first, when I, I talked about my storm to my wife and say, oh, I'll buy him this for Christmas and we'll, we'll show it at the, at the, at the, when I'll go into the class. She, she said, no, you won't buy a $500 gift because it's a gift for you. If you want to buy yourself a Lego, buy it, but don't, don't, don't buy it through his Christmas present. So she, she kind of saw through me. <laughs> I, I, I didn't get it yet. It's under it, it but I bought one. Uh, I bought one last week uh, while visiting the schools. A lot of their IT people, uh, they were a lot of cool school. They're using Mindstorm to show la uh, on, uh, at lunchtime. And my daughter is showing a lot of interest into uh, software programming and robotics. So we, I bought one, but for for the family, I'll, I'll get it out at the at Christmas. But I won't put any, any name on it. <laughs> uh, oh, <laughs> no, uh, she, she, they'll know it's from me. But it, it's uh, when mine the Mindstorm. Uh, there's another one that I've started to play with. Uh, we played with at the, the DevOps for Kids in Montreal. It's a DM bot. It's an Arduino board. It's a bit like a Raspberry board. There's two. There's wheels on this. There's two eyes. It's it. You use Scratch to program it. It's it's really fast. In a couple uh, in a, in a couple minutes, you get that little robots to move a lot faster than a lot simpler than the mice phone to get going. She, so now that's how I introduced her to to robotics. But when you get into robotic, you kind of changing away a bit what you're, you're teaching them. You're teaching them a bit less programming, but a bit more physics. One thing that we were doing at, at the DevOps for kids is we asked them to get that M-Bot uh, spinning on, this, on himself. And the, the kid that would get it to spin as fast as possible in the smallest uh, uh, circle would get a chocolate bar. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, well, for Good thing there weren't too many parents in there because that's <laughs> but hey, that's how we, we kind of get that motivated and a lot of the kids got the, the wheel spinning and turn 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 and they were turning but in the fairly fairly big circle and one kid kind of figured out that if he gets one wheel spinning one side and another wheel spinning another side and changing the speed that you're going you'll be able to spin it on itself. He was, uh, he was about 13 years old, but he figured that out uh, more, but that's not programming. Uh, it's more physics and how you, how you move object. So that's a bit uh, what Mindstorm will bring to, to, to the box. If you, and the other two kind of can be linked together, the Raspberry Pi, where you can get uh, a bit more uh, advanced in, in hardware as well if you want, and the Minecraft. Minecraft, that's the ultimate goal. That's our, well, for kids right now, if you, if, the, if you have any kids, when they'll get to 10 years old, they're all playing Minecraft right now. And when you show them that, well, at six they do, but they understand it a bit more at, uh, uh, at eight or nine, but they can create their own explosive. And uh, um, uh, there's a kid that presented this year at, uh, at Java One. He's, 13, he had a full crowd, and he was running Minecraft inside a Docker container, and he was showing how to create new mobs and deploy them into, do into Docker and get it going to, okay, the kids, his dad was an Oracle uh, advocate, has been working for Oracle for a long time, he's been in there, now his dad is a Docker captain, he's in there but he's a pretty bright kid. It's not the, he's actually doing it, and it's something to be standing in front of uh, 300 people to, to start talking when you're uh, 13 years old. It's, uh, it's pretty amazing. But we looked, we looked at that talk, and that's what my daughter wants to do now. So uh, she wants a computer, but with the Raspberry Pi, which is 99 bucks, you can get the Minecraft running there pretty easily. Anybody has a, an old screen lying around somewhere in, in the closet or under a bed, get this out, get a keyboard in, and you got your Minecraft and uh, uh, Raspberry Pi ready, and your, your development set is there. And if you want to try to put it into Docker, 
be my guess. It's running pretty well uh, on the Raspberry Pi as well. But once, once that was done, I was about in December or January, and we need to get going because March is getting a bit closer. But, you know, like every good development process, you have to start on the last day. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> so that's where our green foot came to play. Greenfoot was actually created by University of Kent in uh, in, uh, in England. Uh, they are also they are also the one that created the project Blue Jay. That's uh, uh, it's based on Eclipse and it's used in in a lot of university and engineer and uh, software engineering to teach uh, uh, engineer how to program. It's easy to switch for it's easy to switch from block of code to whatever you want. If you want, you can, because it's an ID on its own. It won't force you to be, to, uh, to do uh, object-oriented programming. It won't force you to do procedural programming. You, you can evolve as you want. Uh, I found out this morning uh, uh, that the version that I've downloaded of Greenfoot, there, there's one thing broken on the text. So you can drag and drop some of the object into it and right click on that object and make him do some stuff. So you don't actually code and you're starting to animate your, uh, your scene. So, but you can always dig in and, and, uh, and, do, and do the project. For my part, I found that out after the game was done because I, my, my focus was to teach them how to program, not how to, to get around uh, to program, but like any good developers, I think we're lazy that's why we, we're in software engineering at the beginning, and that's why we're, we're always trying to automate some stuff. If, you, if I do something more than three times, it's uh, because I, I want to work too hard and I haven't had time to, to, to automate it yet. The community around Greenfoot is pretty good. There's a lot of, uh, of stuff on uh, Joycode or uh, on YouTube if you want to do it. It's a multi-language IDE. Uh, last year, they had about four or five languages that they were supporting, like French, English, Spanish, Portuguese, like those, uh, those widespread and mostly around England. And, uh, but now they're supporting pretty much everything, Arabic, a uh, couple dialect of Chinese, some Indian. There, there's a lot that uh, the IDE itself will support. If you link it to the, uh, your, uh, your, G, uh, your uh, Java doc that it's in your, in your own language. That's how the, the Java doc will be open to you. The only thing that won't change is it's how you, you name your object or your things like that because it's, gener it's user generated. They, they, can, uh, they can't adapt that. It will run on any, uh, any platforms that you want. And once you have done the project, uh, right now my projects are running inside that the ID itself. That's what they use to, to play the game and everything. But you can take it out and run it as an applet and put it on Greenfoot if you want, where there's a bunch of, uh, there's a bunch of game that are already there if you want to sparkle their imagination and how to, to do things. You can, uh, you can extract it from there and run it as a, an executable file and try to run it anywhere. And I, I want to try just for the sake of it uh, to try to put it in, in Docker and see and see what it, what it's going to do. But that's because sometimes we have nothing to do and uh, we try stuff like that. I don't see why the benefits of of it, but maybe I'll be able to put it on a Raspberry Pi and everything will be good. Uh, I actually spoke when I when I spa, uh, when I did that talk at Java One. For, uh, the four guys responsible for that project, they were sitting there in the in the, <laughs> in the room. No uh, well, I didn't know actually. I I, I didn't know, and I thanked them about it because they came and they presented themselves at the uh, at the end of the the presentation, saying that well, here is the lead architect on the project. Here I'm the response, and I said, okay, thanks guys. I hope I didn't say too too many. Uh, too many false things, or then uh, brought you, uh, made you proud on this one because, well, I'm pretty sure if it was nerve-wracking enough to be sitting there uh, in, on the stage there, and there's 
there was a bit more than 200 people in that room. And there's four people that actually created the, the project that are, that are there. Uh, I started to communicate a lot with them now through Twitter and stuff like that. It, it was a pretty enriched, uh, uh, it, it, uh, it helped a lot. So, I'll, uh, it's time to, to try to show you a bit what, what Greenfoot does. But now I'm not on duplicated screen, so it might be a bit hard. <laughs> so that, 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 that's the game that uh, my, my, my kids have created. At the basics, uh, and we'll see a bit later, I'll start a small project called FAST. We'll see how fast we can get to some of those basics uh, uh, a bit later. There's two elements that are part of Greenfoot, your world, which is that 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 uh, that blue box there, and actors, which are the object that that uh, you're bringing. Instead of extending object, you're you're extending actors. And the way that Greenfoot works is there's a there's a thread that runs in the back, and it will at depending on the speed that you would have selected, it will it will call the actor met the act method of those objects. So if you remove uh, if you take further, well, it's not showing because uh, I had to screw the, 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 the resolution, but if you take at my scoreboard, I remove. I don't want it to, to reappear every time it calls um, uh, a method. I'll, I have removed the act method uh, from it. So it's basic ID, like every, it's, it's normal, Java code that's appearing. You'll, you can imp the the beauty of this is is if I don't want to use Java, I can't not use Java. I can use only what Greenfoot is providing me. Greenfoot is a library on itself, and it it brings some abstraction. You all your key down, mouse press, things like that are part of the Greenfoot uh, static uh, library. It's all static cl uh, call. In this case, uh, when, when I'm drawing the scoreboard, I wanted to, to use, I, uh, we were using something different. So I, I use, uh, we got to use the AWT, the color and the font of that Java was providing us. I, on the laptop, I'm running, uh, I'm running Java 8. So on the side project, I actually refactored some some code to, to run it into uh, Lambda, and it does support. It, it will support the, the, uh, what, what you're bringing in. There's basic option that, that, uh, that you can bring in. There's always your, your light color, so you can put it, all blocks of code, and it's showing pretty well on your screen, but you can always, uh, so there's a visual aids with, uh, with color, so they, they know the block of code. If I remove uh, what what's closing my uh, uh, what was closing my 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 method, they, it it gets a bit confused. So the the line directly, I have a visual aid, an instant. It's an instant feedback. Uh, it's that's uh, if I if I have one word that uh, you need to to remember, it's instant feedback. It's it's. No, they, and it's actually highlighted like they do in, in our tools or the Eclipse or the IntelliJ. They'll, they'll, they'll highlight what we want. But actually, when you've been playing with this for a while, I heard you saying we should do that, but I, I get used to it. When you, when you go into an Eclipse and you only see this, this little uh, flashing and you, you have a pretty big class and you have to figure out uh, because you're doing code review and they did a... You did a method that has 150 lines of code, and you have to figure out where that bracket is actually matching with. If I had this color, it would be a lot simpler. We thought about doing it for kids, but I think it would be uh, helpful uh, for uh, for a reviewer as well. <laughs> That's a pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's a good question. No. Well, yeah. Uh, but you have to understand that most of the code, I I altered some of the code, but I didn't I didn't re I didn't refactor anything. So if they decide, I, for sake of clarity, when I, I w the first time I was showing them, I was saying, okay, let, I, on purpose, I've put spaces between a, a bracket and a number, so it would be a bit more space, and it would be a lot easier for me to, and for them to see. So they started to do it. But if at one point they, the scoreboard they decided to, I can tell them, oh, it's a class, go with an uppercase, but if they had done it with a lowercase, does, does it really defeat my purpose? Not really, because they they done what we wanted. At one point, uh, uh, we still have trouble with the experienced developer to follow those things, so I, I, I don't want to argue with my 10 years old on this one. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, there, 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 there's some check style that are, you know, auto indent is there, there's uh, matching brackets, you, you can add some of the element, you can play with the bindings if you want, if you, it's, it's really a full-fledged IDE, because I can change my key binding to, to get them to do what, what I would want. Uh, now, that's where I would change uh, the interface, how I want to, which language I would want, and like I said, there, there, there's a bunch, that the, a lot more than only four, more than what I needed it. And you can import any library that, that you want. So I don't know if you had a, out of my head, if I had written something in Scala and it would run, could I be able to, to import it there and, and get them to use it? Maybe, because I can, I can actually uh, go wherever I want on this. And I, I would, that's actually where I've defined it, where my, my uh, the, the URL, where to get the, uh, the Java dot that, that I wanted. And uh, so at the IDE level, it kind of did pretty much. It met uh, the basic criteria that I was looking for. There, your IDE, you can always go to a, a documentation. Would it work? Yeah, oh, yeah, probably I'm offline. And when we're talking about uh, instant feedback, if, if I do an error, and that's where it's starting to get a bit more stressful, programming between, before, in front of 200 Java developers, it's 200 pairs of eyes that are there just to make sure that you're making a mistake. But <laughs> to be able to show that, that there's an instant feedback even when you're doing a mistake, so you have to do some mistakes on purpose. And <laughs> so it's, a, and programming standing up, uh, I was saying it at Pivotal at lunch, for me, it's like it doesn't work. Now, I, I think you, you need practice to, to try to do, because now either I stand up or I program. It's, it's not a, it, it, it's, is it because you see this, the, your, your code differently because you're, you're, you're from the air? I don't know, but I make silly mistakes when I code standing up. <laughs> Depends how much beer, because a lot of beer standing up might not be a good idea. <laughs> No, it's like, so if I, if I bring in a, a small, a, an error right now that's, uh, and I, I try to compile this, it, there's visual aids that's gonna tell me, but if the kid was really, really fast and got back to his game, it, it's, pretty, it's pretty clear that the game is not working, it's being all ashed out. But if you see the difference between the world and the scoreboard, the scoreboard, is, is hash in red, and the world is hash in, uh, I think it's a type of gray, blue type of thing. So it's giving them feedback that, well, it's probably here. There's, there's a console if you want, like a normal Java programming, uh, the, a normal. Uh, so if I, if I save it back, it, it will compile it. If I go back, I'm back, and my game is there back and running. At the beginning, I had actors. All the objects that were coming in were under actors. Like, 
if you look now, I have, I have turtles, lobsters, starfish that are, that inherit from, from obstacles. There's the bullet and the dolphin that, uh, that inherit from controller. That's refactoring that they did on their own. What I did is say, okay, an obstacle, uh, if I, I'll bring back the game to whichever size it was. It's, it's screwing with the, it's a bit screwy on the screen. So it, it's a bit bigger than what it is. But so, so if I start the game, the dolphin will fall down. I need to press some key to get it to go up. And it's throwing me some obstacles. There's starfish that uh, the, the, they decided that the dolphin eats the starfish and there'll be lobster and turtle that their obstacles, if you, if you hit them, you die. <laughs> and there, there's two principles that was, that, that was uh, coming from there. But when we were talking about inheritance, they're all, they were all different, but they're obstacles. So there was one, fa our family of, of uh, policemen in the Playmobil became obstacles. And when I asked them, is there a difference between a turtle and a lobster? They say, eh, eh, other than they do not look the same there. What, what's the difference between the two? Well, the turtle is walking really, really slowly and the lobster is going really, really fast. Okay, so, and what's the difference between the starfish? Well, the starfish doesn't really move, but they decided that it would move at a different, at a different speed. So that, that's how we got the obstacle moving, which, which only defined a, a standard speed of, of moving of two units per time that you're asking uh, that the act method is being called. And if I, uh, and if you look at the turtle, well, it's moving slower by one unit of your standard speed. And you get your, and if I go, assume, if I got the lobster, the lobster moves the standard speed. There's a minus one there, because there's, in, if you look at your world, and that's a, sm if you tackle this, and they're in fourth grade, well, in Quebec, that's when they're trying to, that's how, that's when they start to learn in mathematics, the X and Y. So when we start, when we thought, when we tackle that, she, she had spent like a week with her teacher telling her that you had the X and Y and that zero, zero, what at, was at the bottom left of the screen. But I got them going on the Saturday afternoon telling her, no, no, your bottom, your zero, zero, is at the top. <laughs> it's at the top left of your screen. So turn turn your thing around. And if you instead of going plus one when you go left to right, you'll go minus one from right. Uh, you you'll go you'll go. So you. <laughs> that that's what I taught actually. But it's actually helped her. There's a lot of things that, and. The, it's been proven, and I read it in some uh, in some uh, documents where. If you take a kid and you're able to get them to program, you'll, 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 you'll actually going to improve their uh, resolution skill and a lot of their mathematics skills. But if you take a, a kid that's really good in, in uh, uh, resolution of problems, it doesn't mean that they'll be a good programmer. Though. But it, it does help to it, it, we, it, it does help because it's a lot of thinking, it's problem solving. If there is an interest in it, there's a way after that to spin it inside, in, inside them. But I actually had the teacher, the teacher, when we went to a parent-teacher me, uh, meeting at the end, she, she actually asked me why she turned, or she turned at the, at the, the first, she saw them turn it. I said, well, we, that, because we, we did that. But, she did that for a week after. After that, she came back to, to her normal way of, uh, of, uh, of processing, <laughs> of processing her world.
And uh, another thing is that the first time that they got in, all the obstacles were were uh, on the same place. They, they are, so when they had figured out that they, it would throw the obstacle in the middle of the screen, you just make sure that you stay on the th on top or at the bottom, and you could go for hours and hours. So that's where she said, hey, how can I do this then? But I know how to do it. Do you know how to do it? And then they get frustrated, but it's all in that process of, of getting them to, to think out loud their process. How, how would you do it if you want to bring uh, something new on your carpet? You want, you, you want to bring a new toy on your, on your carpet, so how, how would you do it? But I'll go into my, my bucket of toys, I'll, I'll pick one and I'll bring it. And, and, and she, she figured that, uh, she kind of taught me that a lot. So it's, she, and she came and said, it's like when you're playing bingo, I, I would roll and take one ball out. So that, at that moment, she kind of had figured out what she, she needed to do. She needed to do something randomly where she just picked something out of the, of the, of the, of the window. And that's, that's actually where, uh, sorry. Just keep press, uh, just not sure where it's, uh, there's a random somewhere, but I can't remember where the actual where I actually put it. I think it's the beer. <laughs> ah, it's in the world, sorry. I think, yeah. Uh, you're acting there, get scoreboard, out of yeah. And your add obstacles, they we we if you go on top, there's a Java util that's being called. And it's uh, to be able to use a random method that is there. But that's, that's where being able to refactor it as, uh, as being one obstacle, uh, being uh, the family of obstacles instead of being four different class not, or three different class not related to one another helped us to refactor a bit uh, the, that code and make it uh, a bit more uh, uh, concise. The same way when we're talking about uh, uh, the touching, uh, touching obstacle, which is here, that method used to be 20 line longer because they had to check, uh, have I touched something? Yes, I did. Is it, uh, have I touched a, a turtle? Oh, I no, I didn't touch a turtle. Has I, have I touched a lobster? No, I haven't touched. Have I touched a, oh yeah, that's what I did. Let's add something to the scoreboard. Now they can just say, am I touching? Uh, am I touching uh, an obstacle? Yes. Which type of obstacle am I am I touching? And that, that's uh, that's how they they got uh, uh, that they got this going. So it took about uh, an afternoon, three to four hours, to create what what is there. What is there spent in the in the, about two two different afternoons. And one morning I, I woke up. And there's a few. There was a feature that that was added to to the game. My my son found it pretty boring that it was just uh, trying to uh, avoid obstacle coming. He, he needed a bit more action, so he wanted to add a way to to destroy the obstacle that 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 that, that, that was coming that was coming to him. So uh, that's uh, if I. Um, to, to show you what it did, it's, he, he, they woke up early that morning, I think it was like 5 or 5.30, and they, they, that's what they had going, where the game was going, and if you press F, there would be a ball, there would be something being thrown. And the only thing that I had to help them on is that, because it's calling act every single time, the way they had done it, it's like every single time when you had that ball going, you would call an add ball. So you would see the actual trail of the, of the ball going until it actually hit uh, the obstacle. For them, it was fun. You had, but when he, he was there and pressing F, 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 so the screen would be like all, all red until he actually hit something. 
And, but they, they did it on their own. So when they come and wake you up at 6.15, you're, you're, <laughs> you're, you're, you're kind of pissed because it's Saturday morning. You said, I could have had maybe 45 more minutes. You're old enough to... But you, you get down. It's because they had that trouble where they had that red the line in the, in the screen and they wanted you to help. So you kind of... of being a bit less frustrated because they, they did some something uh, pretty neat. So just to show you how how fast uh, how fast this could be and how uh, how easy it is. But I I I I do joke about that because I I don't know how is the the Java. I'm not kidding. Uh, I think your kids might be better at some of our interview questions. I, 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 you know, I, I manage a team. There's about 45 people in my team. And right now, <clears throat> I don't know how's the Java scene in Toronto, but in Montreal, it, it's pretty aggressive. Mostly at the, when we try, we're trying to hire from out of the universities because there's not that many engineers that comes out of the universities. And they, do, they all want to work in cool place like... G software. If you guys read about G software, they're sending their top engineer one, twice a twice a year in some houses somewhere in, in the world to to do hackathon for for a year. They actually have to work there. The, but they, it, it's cool. They all that's where all our kids. It's in the, the old Montreal. And that's how all the the young engineer graduating from university in Montreal. That's how that's where they want to go to work. So. Yeah, I'm 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 starting to 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 uh, teach my my replacement or my my new hire. Maybe no, at six in uh, six years she'll be able to work legally through uh, in the summer. So I'll hire them. I'll hire her, and uh, I'll be good. <laughs> so if uh, if you want to get going pretty easily, we we can start a new uh, Java scenario, and uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll call it. Uh, Jog Toronto, and I'm not. I'm not too. Uh, you can see that I'm not too creative in my way. So, it, while it's creating the 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 world itself, it created my world, which which I can go and rename, which was called Sea World in the other, and some actors. There, there's nothing. When I start, there's nothing there. If I right click on actors, I'll be able to create a new subclass, and. If you have no no drawing talents, you, there there's a bunch of stuff that you can select, and that that's exactly why it's a red ball that's it's firing, because it the PO wanted a water bubble, but a Greenfoot doesn't provide any water bubble, so it's a, <laughs> it's a red ball, you know. But there there's a lot there's a lot of different things that that it's providing you. Or you, uh, or you can go and import a, any file uh, that you want. And for for the purpose of uh, of Java one, and or a Java user group on it. Uh, no, no, we don't want to go in this type of. I've created. I've adapted a, a, a small Duke, because I, I thought it was uh, a bit more fitting. So. My class is created. Like, like I said, I can right click on it and say, uh, I want a new Duke and add it to my world. And I can save that world. And now, you see, my world is there. He has, he has he, the way they generated code, they, they'll call it prepared uh, class uh, by, by default. He uh, does it. On, what I did save, it's actually did it on his own. Are you trying to do exactly what I do at the same time? Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll, okay. So if you if you have your your B on your in your in your actor class, if you right click on it, you create a new new class. You add it to your world. Right click in your world and do save the world. And it should it should all. It, and now it, it should have opened your, uh, it, it, yeah. So it, it, it had it my Duke, and it, it did the position directly uh, 
uh, where, I, where I have added it into my screen. If I wanted to, to move, and it didn't work when I tried it uh, earlier, but let's try to do it here. If I go and inherit it, I'll see all the different method that is coming from the actor class. I can try move, give it a value or select a value if I want, but there's, there's none. I say five, and you, you saw that it moved five. If I go five, it might be a bit small to actually see that it's moving. Is it It, it moved 20, 20 pieces. If I click in the actual world, I can inherit the, the different method uh, of the world uh, of the world itself. So that's where you, what was I was saying, it, it, you can, there's that code automatically generated if you want, if on the right click. But I found that out after I actually I taught them how to <laughs> how to do it on their own. So oh, let's say I, I go uh, into, my, into my Duke and I want it to, to move here. I can just call the method move. I say one. So if I start the game and I press press, it will move one every, every single time that it calls the method act. So until I, I press pause or, or, or it gets out uh, of, the, of, the, of the actual world. See, we, by talking and by helping uh, her to try to do it, it we, we kind of did all this in five, six minutes. So when the, if we go back to instant feedback, he, he, it's really creating a Lego. I, I'm on the first page, which is add first piece. So on my, I, I just added the first piece. Now I turn the other page and I say, okay, I want it to move. So we, we did uh, we did the uh, we did the other page. Let's if we want to put it a bit more uh, uh, more tricky uh, and that code convention. Maybe it's not this textile <laughs> that you guys are using. <laughs> While helping them, it's a, so if I go in uh, in the green foot, so it, uh, it doesn't like. There's that control uh, space. Uh, uh, if you want, like in any normal uh, uh, IDE, I do is ski down. I'll do up. And let me see. Ah. Usually it comes a lot faster. Yeah. What? Yeah. There you go. So now if I do run, it won't do anything until I press the the up key. Yeah. Again. Instant, fee, instant feedback, or I could do minus one, or what, uh, any, any other way uh, that I want. So either I, I can keep going at this a long, long time. So we can either try to add something else, okay, or. Uh, so So she kind of was the cue here. So if uh, we still have a couple of minutes, if there's there, there's question or if there's anything that the so are they going to expand on what they have now, or are they going to start something new? Or? Uh, the Greenfoot people, no, no. my kids, the kids. Uh, they, they do right now. The the only problem is the if you if, if we and if I bring back the the presentation just right. while we're talking here. What I'm, what I'm getting at is 